Okay, so now for question number three from the sample assessment paper um, from um, the International A-Level, Pure Mathematics 1. Here we have a question, uh, we have to solve a pair of simultaneous equations. One of them is a linear equation, the other one is um, some sort of a curve. Okay, it's not quite a quadratic, some sort of a curve, some sort of a type of curve. Now, these equations, um, in order to solve them, we have to use substitution. Okay, it's very difficult for us to use elimination in such questions, although it is um, possible, in fact, okay, but it will make life very difficult for us if we try it. Okay, if I try to make, for example, this y squared, okay, then I have to square the whole of this. Um, I, I mean, I could possibly do it. I could put everything on that side and then square it. It's possible. Um, you could use that method. You could say y equals minus 4x minus 1 and then square both sides. And then y equals minus 5x squared minus 2x. And then you could subtract the two equations and then you'll have a, uh, a, an equation with just um, x's in it. Okay, so you could do that and that would work in this case. Um, um, but in general, it's easier to use substitution when you have such questions. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll show you both ways and then we can judge for ourselves. So let's start with the way of substitution. And for substitution, what you need to do is you need to make one of these a subject of the formula from the, from the linear equation. So you have y plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now, if I was to make x a subject, I'll be left with... 1 minus y divided by 4, which will have a fraction in it, which will make life a bit more complicated when I try to, um, you know, substitute that into the other equation. I will end up with fractions and it will be a bit more complicated. So we like to la make life a bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say y equals uh, minus 4x minus 1. I, so I make y the subject, then I've got minus 4x minus 1, which I can then substitute into the second equation, leaving me, instead of the y here, and leave, that will leave me with just um, x terms, and I can solve for the x and then find what y is. So let me do that. Let me put this now into this equation. So instead of the y, I'm going to put minus 4x minus 1. So minus 4x minus 1 squared plus 5x squared plus 2x equals 0. Okay, so now we have something here. When you square this, um, basically, when you when you when you uh, basically we have just now the x terms. We don't have any y terms. We can solve. We'll end up with a quadratic equation. Now you've got both minuses in here, and if you square this, you'll see something. What well, basically what happens is is as if it's just four uh, x plus one, because as we know, minus three squared is the same as three squared. So minus four x minus one squared will give you the same thing as four x plus one squared. It will give you exactly the same thing. Okay, this is exactly the opposite of that. Okay, but in case you're, you're not convinced by that, well, let's just square it anyway. You get minus 4x times uh, minus 4x squared. Okay, that's going to give you uh, minus 4x times minus 4x, which is 16x squared. Then you'll have minus 4x times minus 1. Basically, you have 2 times this times this, so you're going to have plus 8x. If you were to think about it in terms of expanding two brackets, minus 4x minus 1, you'd have... Um, 16x squared um, plus 4x plus another 4x plus 8x and then you're going to have your plus 1 at the end which is when you multiply these two together that's the square of that and you've got plus 5x squared and plus 2x equals 0 so you can see it's as if I just expanded 4x plus 1 squared anyway now 16x squared plus 5x squared is 21x squared 8x plus 2x is 10x and you got plus 1 and you got equals 0 now, does it say find the exact, so it says solve. So I'm assuming that we will be able to factorize this quadratic equation in order for us to solve it because it doesn't say give it an exact form. That's normally a clue. So let's just check to see if it factorizes. I like to use this, I call it the window method. Okay, when I factorize. So basically, I know that um, when I multiply this number and that number, these will be my two brackets, by the way. When I multiply these two together, I have to get 21x squared. And I want to multiply these two numbers together. These will be my two terms in the, the number terms in the bracket. When I multiply those two terms together, I have to get 1. Okay. Uh, it has to be plus 1. And that, that must be a plus 1 here, and that must be a plus 1 here. We know that for sure. Okay, because 1 times 1 is 1. They're both positive here, so both of them have to be positive numbers. So I've got to think now of um, basically the two numbers that multiply to give me 21 
and they add to give me 10. Well, that's pretty easy. That's 3x and 7x. All right, 3x here and 7x here. So the, the, these two numbers will always be the same product as those two numbers. So that's 21x squared and that's 21x squared. And they add up to 10x. That has to be the, the, the sum of those two numbers has to be the same as that. So now we can take out the common factor and write it here. So that's going to be uh, 3x and that's going to be uh, 7x. And there we have our answer. Normally, I don't actually do this part until the end. I do that first. I take out the common factor. Then I ask myself, uh, 7x times something gives me 7x. Well, that's plus 1. And 3x times something gives me 3x. Well, that's plus 1. But I could just see from the beginning it must be plus 1 and plus 1. Anyway, so we got our two brackets, 3x plus 1. And we got the other one as 7x plus 1 equals 0. So now we can say either 3x plus 1 is 0, in which case x is going to be minus a third. Or 7x plus 1 is 0. In that case, x is going to be minus 1 over 7. So those are the x values. Now, when you solve a pair of simultaneous equations, you have to give the x and the y values. Now, we know that y is equal to minus 4x minus 1. So I, I know that y is equal to minus 4x and minus 1. So now if I just substitute those values in for the x values, I can get my y value. So we're going to say when x is equal to minus one third, y is going to be minus four times minus one third minus one, which is four thirds minus three thirds, which is one third. Okay, that's going to be four thirds minus one is which is three thirds, which is one third. And when x is equal to minus one over seven, then y is going to be minus four times minus 1 over 7 minus 1 which is 4 over 7 minus 7 over 7 which is minus 3 over 7 okay so our values are so if we just make sure so it's very clear for the examiner you write your answers all properly at the end when x equals minus 1 third y is equal to 1 third that's one pair of solutions they didn't ask us in coordinate form, so we don't need to write in coordinate form. And when x is equal to minus 1 over 7, then y is equal to minus 3 over 7. And those are the two solutions to this pair of simultaneous equations. And there we have it. That's question number 3 done. Okay, now I did mention that I'm going to show you how to do this um, by using uh, elimination. And let's see if it actually works out quicker in this case. There are definitely some cases where it won't be as easy, but let's see if it actually works out. I see that we can, um, as we, we don't have any x, y terms. If you had x, y terms as well, it might be different, but let's just make y equals minus 4x minus 1. That's the first equation. And the other one is y squared equals minus 5x squared uh, minus 2x. Now, let me take this and square both sides. Okay, if I square both sides, I'm going to have y squared equals, and as we saw before, that's going to be 16x squared, and it's going to be a plus 8x, and it's going to be plus 1. So now we can see that these two equations have got, um, both of them have y squared. So, so if we subtract the two equations, if I do equation 2 minus equation 1, I'm going to get 0 equals 21x squared, 16x squared minus minus 5x squared, which is 16x squared plus 5x squared, 8x minus minus 2x, which is plus 10x and plus 1. And then we've got back to the same situation that we had at this stage here. And the rest will be the same. So you can see that in this particular case, elimination also helps us to get to the same equation. Okay, but I, what I wouldn't do in this case, I wouldn't make x the subject and then try to solve because it will just make fractions and make things more a lot more difficult. So there we have the solutions to this equation, uh, this pair of simultaneous equations.